let's talk about transabdominal cerclage placement for cervical insufficiency. Now, cervical insufficiency is painless cervical dilation that leads to a pregnancy loss in the second trimester. Now, these losses typically occur between 14 weeks and 24 weeks. And many times the patient, again, will have no symptoms, but on an ultrasound or an exam for, for, for some reason, their cervix is noted to be short or dilated, sometimes with the bag of water coming through the cervix or all the way through the cervix and into the vagina. Now, one of the ways that we can manage cervical insufficiency in the next pregnancy would be through cerclage placement. Cerclages can be placed one of two ways. The first way is through a transvaginal approach, meaning we go in through the vagina to the, to the cervix and we can place either a McDonald's cerclage or a Sherrodkar cerclage. The second type of cerclage is a transabdominal cerclage, and that's me that means we approach the uterus through the abdomen, either with a, a laparoscopic procedure or through an open laparotomy. Now, a transabdominal cerclage is a more involved procedure and there are more risks associated with it. And here is an example um, of what uh, the placement would look like once it's placed, because you can place it higher up on the cervix and uh, the lower uterine segment, or closer to the lower, lower uterine segment. And here's another representation of where a transabdominal cerclage might be placed on the uterus. Here are some additional facts that people need to know about transabdominal cerclage. First of all, once it's placed, a cesarean is required. Next, there are two categories of patients that are the best candidates for a transabdominal cerclage. Number one, the first candidate would be someone who's unable to undergo a transvaginal approach or a procedure or cerclage uh, because of an extremely short or absent cervix, amputated cervix, marked cervical scarring, or a cervical defect that makes it technically difficult to place the cerclage th through the transvaginal approach. And the second type of patient be would be someone who has had a failure to del deliver a healthy newborn after at least one prior prophylactic transvaginal cerclage. Now again, as I said before, a transabdominal cerclage can be placed either laparoscopically, meaning with the scopes, or with an incision on your abdomen, which is called an open laparotomy. A transabdominal cerclage can be placed before pregnancy in someone who has a history of what I mentioned before, or it can be placed early in pregnancy. And the transabdominal cerclage is typically not placed beyond 14 weeks of gestation, meaning it has to be placed prior to that. So typically within 10 to 14 weeks of pregnancy. The best time to deliver the patient is between 36 weeks and zero days and 37 weeks and six days. And finally, if the patient is done having children, then the transabdominal cerclage can be removed at the time of the cesarean. If they're not, then it can be left in place until the next pregnancy. And finally, it's very important that whoever is going to place this transabdominal cerclage has experience in placing these types of cerclages.